Does anyone actually remember? Does anyone actually remember Kung Fu Panda 3? I finally come to the realization that people just really like Kung Fu Panda. Except for the fourth movie. That one's not so good, apparently. People like this goofy little panda so much that when I made a video on the first movie, people begged me to watch the second one. And when I finally watched the second one, people begged me to watch the third one. I'm sensing a pattern here. Now, I won't lie, I was a little surprised to see the third movie get so much love. To remind you guys, I made a poll asking which movie you thought was the best, and Kung Fu Panda 3 was the lowest voted answer. I never watched the third movie before, so I was under the assumption that the movie just wasn't that good. The first two movies were kind of dark, and the ending scene in the second movie kind of sucked. But does that mean the third movie sucks as well? It's definitely not perfect, it's got a lot of issues, but after watching it for the very first time, I still think it's a very fun time. And if I'm being honest, I think a lot of the hate isn't warranted? I think a lot of people's judgment is clouded on this one. So today, I'll be taking a look at the third Kung Fu Panda movie in full to see what all the ruckus is about. Is it the worst one? Is it even really that bad? Well, that's what we're gonna find out today, so grab your copy of Kung Fu Panda for the PlayStation 2. I actually tried to find the real physical version of the game somewhere. Couldn't find it. So without further ado, let's watch DreamWorks Animation's very own Kung Fu Panda 3. Our adventure begins with Master Ugwe himself. I thought he just straight up died in the first movie, but turns out he's just been chilling in a place called the Spirit Realm. Itchy nose. You know, I never really noticed it before, but... Yeah, I guess, I guess that is his nose. Anyway, Master Ugwe's meditation is cut short when an evil bull tries to attack him. Ugwe and this bull have a pretty cool fight scene. I'm just gonna get this out of the way now. The animation in this movie is super pretty to look at. Okay, they always nail it out of the park. So the fight between these two is actually pretty close, which is when we find out that this isn't just some random bull, but someone Master Ugwe fought over 500 years ago. Turns out the bull's name is Kai, which if you're 15 or younger, you probably just got really excited when I said that name. Oh my God! Sadly, Kai gets the upper hand in this fight, which allows him to turn Ugwe into a jade statue, and I'm not kidding, suck all the energy out of him and capsulize his chi, which for this movie basically means his power. After collecting Ugwe's chi alongside like 10 other masters I forgot to mention, Kai now has the power to return back to the mortal world where, you guessed it, he plans on tracking down Po to kill him. I guess. Kai basically has sucked like all the power out of these masters and now he's using it to like travel through universes or whatever. I don't know. It's cool. And that's all the setup we really need for now because it's time to fly with the Furious Five. We get this super epic scene where the gang flies through the air in unison. It's all very heroic. And of course they land at the noodle shop because Poe is hungry. <laughs> okay, listen, I'll be fair here. I've been overly critical about the fat jokes in previous movies, but this time I promise I won't mention them unless they feel super forced. Okay, you have my word. That's character development right there. So it's time for Poe and the Furious Five to do their daily training workout thing, when Master Shifu actually has to deliver some bad news. Turns out it's the last time Master Shifu will ever train a class. He's fallen very ill and has no revives in his inventory left. This is so sad. Obviously I'm kidding, Master Shifu is fine, but he is getting a little older and says that it's about time for him to pass on the teaching responsibilities to the Dragon Warrior. That means Poe is now the teacher of the Furious Five, despite becoming a brand new student like three years ago or something. <laughs> Funny how that worked out. Training will be in the hands of the dragon warrior. What? What? <laughs> That's what I'm saying, what? Poe doesn't believe that he's qualified to teach the Furious Five because honestly, he's not. But at least he's got a whole lot of heart and the iconic gamer posture. We then immediately get a quick training montage type thing where the Furious Five are training under Poe's guidance and they just keep getting hit by stuff. It's kind of funny and I get that they're just making fun of Poe a little here for being like a bad teacher or something. But also these guys are like double S tier fighters. They're almost at the very top. Even if someone tells them to jump in the wrong spot, they should still be able to avoid the obstacle or whatever. Anyway, just my two cents. Who cares? Later that night, Poe is having himself some good sad boy hours, gotta have those, when he eventually runs into Shifu. Like I said, Poe is pretty bummed out, so he's really looking for motivation here, which is when Master Shifu gives the movie its thoughtful quote of the day. If you only do what you can do, you will never be more than you are now. You know, as much as I do my best to nitpick these videos, it's important to remember that I'm usually looking for things to make fun of, and quotes like these really help elevate the movies I watch and remind us that there's still a lot to be enjoyed from stories like this. Anyway, so Poe's being stupid, right? Master Shifu goes on about the role of the Dragon Warrior. It's explained that Poe is now the teacher and Shifu is now the ultra master person, finally replacing Ugwe's role. Think of these three guys in the first movie and they just all leveled up once. Shifu also explains Chi, but we already kind of went through that earlier in the movie. It's just like your energy and power, for lack of a better term. Hey, let's check in on Cairo. Real quick. Kai has returned. Nice. Who? Kai. Ain't that the question? Supreme War. <laughs> While Poe was out being a depressed teacher, Kai successfully used all the chi he gathered to return back to the mortal world. There's this funny interaction where Kai meets these two dudes and they just have no idea who he is. He explains that he used to be a warlord general or something. You'll notice that this is a common theme in this movie, by the way. No one really knows who this guy is at all. Okay, I used to work with Ugwe. Oh, oh Ugwe. 
way. So if you haven't guessed by now, Kai is the main bad guy of this film. He's pretty bad and powerful, I won't lie. But if I'm being honest, he's also kind of forgettable. He's not super menacing or threatening. Like if Shen was here instead of Kai, these two dudes would have been cut open and turned into an all-meat sandwich like five minutes ago. Anyway, Kai releases some jade statues of all the previous masters. They're basically his minions now. They listen to everything he says and he controls them. He tells them to find Ugwe's students, so they all just blindly run in every direction in hopes of finding them. How clever. We skip back to Po, who's taking a bubble bath. You know, just dragon warrior things. But then, Po gets the urgent news that someone in the village is gonna break his dumpling eating record. Who could it be? Po is the largest animal there. I won't drag this out. Turns out this person beating his record is another panda. The exact same panda from the end of the second movie, actually. Any normal person watching this can immediately tell that this is Poe's real dad. This is a big reveal, and even though literally everyone else around them can put two and two together, for some reason, Poe and his father don't click on this right away. The dad's like, I lost my son. And then Poe's like, well, I lost my dad. And then they're both like, okay, bye. <laughs> like, wh why, what? Seriously, I don't think pandas in the real world are stupid creatures. I think they're just really clumsy, which is why they get that rep. But minor spoiler here, every panda in this movie is kind of dumb for some reason. Poe and his dad finally realize who each other are, so they hug it out, which is when my favorite character in the entire franchise shows up. Mr. Ping, who's obviously been Poe's adoptive dad this entire time. Even though the mood is generally up and everyone's excited, Mr. Ping still ends up being pretty angry. He's not sure how to feel, really. He's pretty protective of Poe in general, and also he just spent the last 20 years or whatever taking care of this guy, and now some random Panda wants to waltz up in here and act like his dad? I don't think so. I don't think so. So the real dad, I'm just gonna call him real dad from now on. It's easier. The real dad explains that there's actually a whole secret village full of pandas. Keep this in mind, the fact that it's a secret village is pretty important for later on. So Poe gives his dad a tour of the place, but first, they must conquer a panda's worst fear. A lot of stairs. Jokes aside, Poe shows him around the temple with all the ancient relics and all that. They both goof around for a bit. It's pretty wild, actually, how much Poe acts like his father, despite basically never meeting him before. I guess that's genetic. Must be. Anyway, the Furious Five alongside Master Shifu show up and get to finally meet the real dad. But the meet and greet is cut short when the alarm bell rings and our heroes are called to act. Action. A bunch of Jade Masters show up, so Poe and the gang need to beat them up. It's a pretty cool action scene, the fighting is always great in these movies. The sequence ends with Kai looking through the eyes of his Jade minions, so he's able to see what everyone actually looks like. Not sure how he's able to look through all three sets of eyes at the same time, but I also don't have as much chi as Kai does, so he's probably just really powerful or something. Important to note that during this last part, Poe's real dad looks visibly concerned for his son. Like, you can tell he's not used to all the fighting and all that. Anyway, turns out no one knows who Kai even is, because he only has like two followers on Twitter, so they decide to go check out some ancient scrolls which could hopefully explain everything. There's a bit of backstory here. Basically, Kai and Ugwe were pretty much best friends 500 years ago. There was this big war that happened and Ugwe was about to die because of it until Kai brought him to a bunch of pandas who combined all their chi together and healed them back up to full HP. Kai saw their powers and wanted to have them, I, I guess. So he just randomly decides to break bad like Walter White and takes over the entire chi market until he eventually failed and lost to Ugwe. Also, quick mention, because I made a Breaking Bad reference, Poe's real dad is voiced by Brian Cranston. What a guy. Anyway, so yeah, it turns out the pandas have the highest chi stat in the whole game, and Kai is evil just because. <laughs> Which is easily the weakest reasoning out of the last three films. Again, this movie is good, but the villain, honestly, is pretty mid. The real dad hears all of this and he hates that his son is potentially in danger, so he tells Poe that he should come back to the super secret panda village so the pandas can teach him how to use chi and he can use it to defeat Kai. Everyone thinks this is a good idea, except for Mr. Ping, who just doesn't want to lose the son he spent the last 20 years raising. Ultimately though, it's Poe's decision, so we get the mandatory cool traveling sequence as Poe and his real dad travel to where all the pandas are. Also, during this, Master Shifu sends Crane and Mantis to go find Kai themselves to hopefully get some info on his plans. Why me? Is it because I asked? Should have kept your beak shut. <laughs> That's the most I've heard those characters talk in three movies. I'm not even kidding. Turns out, by the way, that Mr. Ping snuck into Poe's bag earlier and has been with them on this traveling journey the entire time. This scene kind of makes it feel like the writers are portraying Mr. Ping as this stubborn, annoying father, when really, I think he just cares a lot about his son. But I'm also extremely biased. Honestly, he could burn down a whole village and I'd, he'd still be my goat, so. There's also this weird line where Poe finds out for the first time that his dad can fly because, you know, he's a bird, obviously. Reminder that Poe is like 23 years old or something at this point, so he's actually just written to be an idiot. A whole two minutes later, and Poe and his dad arrive at the village. It's kind of exactly what you'd expect. There's like a million pandas that all kind of look the same. There's a bunch of food everywhere all the time, and of course, they struggle to run longer than four seconds. On the bright side though, everyone seems to be really friendly and excited to have another panda added to their group. There's this little panda girl who likes tigress randomly, there's this big panda who hugs really hard, not sure what his deal is, and best of all, there's this panda lady who does ribbon dancing and has a bit of a crush on Poe. Things are getting spicy. The next day now, and Poe wants to begin his training to learn the powers of the panda chi, but turns out he's going about it all wrong. Pandas do not get up at 6 in the morning, Poe. They sleep in until noon and roll on the floor. 
maybe I'm a panda. During all this, Crane and Mantis are on their mission. Remember that? They end up finding Kai somehow, and I'm not gonna sugarcoat it. They both almost immediately die and just become jade statues. I think this was just a way to show how Kai is the real deal and isn't scared to crack a few eggs, so to speak. But to be honest, it kind of just made Crane and Mantis look like a bunch of fools. Like, they're cool. I like them. It's just silly how fast it all goes down, honestly. <laughs> Skipping back to Poe and his dad, we get what's probably the saddest scene in the whole movie. Poe is shown a picture of his mother, who we never really got to know. We get a bit of trauma dumping from the real dad, and then are shown the same flashback from the second movie where the mother presumably dies. It's very sad, but it's also kind of funny when you realize that what's arguably the movie's most serious moment is the scene where Shen makes an appearance. <laughs> like Kai couldn't even do that in his own movie, it's great. The next day now, we're with Master Shifu and what remains of the Furious Five, when all of a sudden, Kai shows up looking like he has the rage of a Spartan and a hatred for Zeus. That's a God of War reference, by the way. What happens next? is a really cool fight between the good guys and Kai plus his minions. I honestly can't verbally explain how cool some of these fight scenes look, and obviously I can't really show them in full right now, but just trust me, everyone here is pretty badass, okay, including Kai. Kai obviously has all these cheese. Cheese? Did I just say cheese? Kai is super powerful because of all the chi he has, so he straight up just kills everyone for lack of a better term. Everyone but Tigress. She kind of just got lost in the shuffle and was able to run away before getting caught, which is a good thing because turns out a couple moments later, she runs all the way to the Panda Village to warn Poe about what just happened. And hopefully she can help build some sort of defense. Notice anything wrong about this scene? Anything that might not make any sense at all, maybe? How about the fact that Tigress immediately fast traveled to the hidden panda village, which has been secretly kept away from the public because it's a secret hidden village. Anyone else wonder how she found Poe here? I don't understand this at all. It's pretty common for me in these videos to miss a couple things here and there since I just watched the movie once and then talk about it right after. So if there's an actual reason why she was able to find this village, please let me know. I'm genuinely curious. Anyway, Poe decides to shift into high gear now. He asks his dad to teach him the art of chi now because they're running out of time. Poe's dad insists that he's just not ready when finally the the truth is revealed. Turns out Poe's dad and every other panda in the village don't have any magical chi powers at all. In fact, many of them probably don't even know what chi is. This twist, if you can even call it that, is pretty predictable. Like, yeah, it was pretty evident that the panda who can't read or write also can't heal people magically. I got that. Why are you disrespecting me, bro? But it being predictable honestly doesn't take anything away. It's still a big reveal because Poe is finding this out for the very first time. Really gotta spell stuff out for this guy, don't you? Anyway, Poe decides to take matters into his own hands and prepare for an attack from Kai, even without mastering the art of chi. We see him assembling some sort of target dummy out of bamboo, which may I add, bamboo that we've never seen any pandas eating. Like, isn't that all pandas eat? Google it. Right now, Google what do pandas eat? Tell me what pops up. Mr. Ping now sees Poe stressed out because he has to fight Kai all on his own, which is when he decides to go talk to the real dad and lay all his cards out on the table. Mr. Ping tells the real dad that he was scared to lose Poe, which is why he snuck into the bag at the beginning. It was nothing against the real dad specifically, he just cares for his son. He was worried at first, but because he's emotionally intelligent and my fucking goat, Mr. Ping realizes that he need not worry because as long as Poe is happy, he is happy. Sometimes we do the wrong things for the right reasons. That's why he's the GOAT, dude. That's why he's the best. That's why I love him. He's the best character in the whole movie. I don't even care. Let's go. Let's go, dude. Let's go! Mr. Ping motivates the real dad who can then rally all the other pandas to help Poe out and defend their village from Kai and his jaded minions. Before that scene, though, I want to mention that Poe is getting some training done with Tigress when he mentions that all he needs to do is get close enough to Kai so that he could use his wishy finger hold on him. That's the that's the skadoosh thing that he does in every movie. So the pandas all show up in an Avengers-type moment, and Poe realizes to be a good teacher, he has to teach things his own way. Not copy someone like Master Shifu. This realization is super epic, just trust me. There's another two-minute montage where he gets all the pandas to learn to fight in their own specialized way. The ribbon girl is given nunchucks so she can just whip them around. The hugging guy, remember him? He's taught how to hug extra hard or something. After the training, Poe is finalizing his plan now. He's got all the pandas around him, which is when- Hey, a panda actually did a bamboo in this movie. All right, my bad. Sentence redacted. Poe is finally having a good moment with his dad again, where they're both apologizing, but it's cut short when the alarm bell rings because Kai has arrived. Again, I'm not entirely sure how Kai even knows how to find this village, but in one of the flashbacks 500 years ago, he did accidentally find it, I think. So I guess he could have remembered all this time. I don't know. There's a scene that honestly isn't really that funny, but I find it hilarious for some reason. Ah, you must be <laughs> okay. a dragon okay, that was good. The final battle begins when Kai releases all the jade statues of previous masters and orders them to catch Poe. Poe, being a 3 million IQ gamer, lures them into the village where all the other pandas are waiting to attack. Everyone attacks on cue, they use their custom weapons and their size to their advantage. There's this moment where a bunch of pandas roll like Mario from Super Mario Odyssey. It's a great scene. The little panda girl from earlier who's obsessed with Tigress even gets a cute moment where they fight together. I will say it's a little weird how these jade statues are all masters but still losing. Like, I guess technically it's not really really the masters, it's 
just a copy of them. But it's still a little weird how a bunch of pandas who couldn't even run at the start of the movie are beating them, but I digress. Even Poe's real dad and Mr. Ping get involved. The whole scene is awesome. Now this fight all leads into something I don't really understand. Kai is seen in the distance alone, kind of freaking out a bit. The idea here is that he sees and I think even feels everything that Jade statues see and feel. And he's got like 10 of those dudes fighting right now. So he's like hella overstimulated. Anyway, eventually Poe gets close enough and... <laughs> What's this? He's gotten a hold of his finger. Okay, we all know where this is going. All right, so let's just say the funny word, Poe, so we can move on. Skadoosh. 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 The Turns out the special wooshy finger hold doesn't work on Kai at all because get this it only works on mortals And since Kai returned to this world through unconventional means he's actually some weird spirit ghost thing Technically Kai beats up Poe for a bit Which is when Poe realizes there's only one way to beat Kai once and for all he wraps himself around Kai and does the wooshy finger hold on himself Which teleports both him and Kai into the spirit realm. What a genius. He must be a chess grandmaster again I'll be brief here Poe and Kai are now in the spirit realm So I guess Poe technically isn't mortal now either not really sure how that works. It's never specified. They have an epic battle in this weird world that mirrors the fight Kai and Uguay had at the very beginning. Epic, epic fight. Super, super cool. But then Kai gets the upper hand and Poe is trapped between his chains. Poe is slowly turning into a jade statue. So there's basically no hope for him. Unless the pandas in the mortal world, alongside Tigris and Mr. Ping for some reason, all combine their energy and pull off the greatest moment in chi history. They all come together and use their chi. This works somehow. And so Poe can break free. And now everything's yellow and he's got a cool hat because he's basically evolved into his final form. Poe names off all the things he truly is, such as the son of a panda, the son of a goose, a student, a teacher. He's all of those, which means he finally understands who he is, which allows him to become all powerful and stuff. Poe kind of turns into this dragon like Liu Kang from Mortal Kombat. He beats up Kai for a bit and steals all the chi back from him, allowing the masters he took to return, including the Furious Five members and Master Shifu. But before Poe returns, he gets to have one final conversation with Master Ugwe, who's still in the spirit realm. <laughs> Listen, I have a weird relationship with the Kung Fu Panda movies. I watched the first three movies once and then meticulously went back and edited all of them. It's been kind of a love-hate relationship and honestly quite the journey. And I gotta say, seeing Poe finally get to talk to Uguay here does put a smile on my face. The conversation they have is pretty deep. Basically, Uguay is proud of Poe for truly becoming the dragon warrior. I'm not crying, you're crying. Uguay even gives Poe his special staff since he's officially become his successor. Also, we find out that apparently Uguay was able to leave the spirit realm whenever he wanted, I think. He was just too lazy to try. They're so relatable. So Poe returns home and the dads alongside pretty much everyone else are super happy to see him. The village and more or less the world is saved for now. The movie ends with Shifu walking up to Poe as he realizes that Poe has mastered Chi and then asks him, can you teach me? That's the end of Kung Fu Panda 3. Was it really as bad as people say it is? You know what? No, it's not. If I'm being honest, I think it might actually be my favorite Kung Fu Panda movie. <laughs> I liked the message and tone in the first one. I loved the villain and the story in the second one, but this third one just felt more cozy to me. I wasn't stressing over murderous peacocks or scrolls of wisdom. I was just having a fun time watching a movie I could laugh at. And at the end of the day, that's all I really wanted. So to everyone who didn't vote for Kung Fu Panda 3 in that poll I made a while back, I understand. I just... I, I think you're wrong. Also, I know people are gonna ask. I don't know when I'm gonna do Kung Fu Panda 4. The movie is pretty new, so just give me some time. Okay, I'll do it eventually, just not soon. And yeah, that's the end of the video. Subscribe, leave a like, and comment if you can. It helps a bunch. Become a member if you can afford it and want your name on the screen now. Thank you to all my members. I appreciate you all so much. It's mind-boggling that you all chose to support me in this way. Also, Discord coming soon? Maybe? Check out my full playlist if you want to see more videos like this. I have a bunch. Paul Abdul scores us one a solid three epic movies out of three. And yeah, thanks for watching. Skadoosh, 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 what the? Ah!